I miss you, baby. Good morning, everybody. Heading north out of Vermont, Route 9. Just came up a uh, pretty decent climb here this morning. And uh, it's so amazing when you come into town and you enjoy uh, getting refreshed, your laundry done, a shower, and you basically feel like you're reborn for a very short time. Then you can back out on trail, and it's always a climb out of town, just the way it is. And by the time you get to the top of your first climb, and all of your, your sweat and everything unlocks every scent that has been hiding in your clean clothes since before they were washed. So, when you make a town stay, enjoy that short time of cleanliness because as soon as you head back out, all of that hiker funk awaits you as soon as you step back on trail. Everything that's been hiding in your clothes, your pack, your shoes, all of those scents await you to remind you of your life on the trail. Truth is, even if you have a very, very sensitive nose like myself, you will learn to accept the scents that are produced by yourself and those around you. And on, not only will you learn people by their trail name and sometimes by their real name, you will also learn to recognize your peers by their scent sometimes. That's all a part of a through hike. Spent the evening yesterday for Nero in Bennington, Vermont at the Catamount Motel. If you guys are uh, looking through your guides or following my videos to kind of see what I've been encountering, Mark that location and your guide, circle it. As you move north through England, things begin to get much more expensive and uh, you know, a value in accommodations is much harder to find as you move north. Paid $65 for a room last evening. That actually included my laundry that was clean when I got it back. Sometimes you get so much dirt and funk in there, it doesn't come back really clean, but uh, I'm sure they have commercial washing machines there for the for the motel. Pete, the owner, was awesome. That $65 included my shuttle from the trailhead to the motel and back to the trailhead the following morning. He really couldn't beat it. My room had two double beds. You split that with somebody and you're in it for the cost of a cheap hostel um, with much, much, much better accommodations. Everything was clean. It was like a 1960s, 70s, I guess motor lodge, you would call it back in the day. Very well kept. Pete took a lot of pride in the place and uh, refrigerator, microwave, coffee, um, right by town, Dollar General right down the street, Chinese restaurant right down the street. So, uh, yeah, put that on your list. I um, really enjoyed my stay there. Goals for the day, everybody. I really don't have any. Freestyling. It just seems like 
the longer I'm out here, I just make sure I have food on my back. I have my home with me, water, check the water sources. And I just keep stepping, falling away blazes. Once it gets to be uh, mid-afternoon, then I start to uh, focus on where I'll lay my head that evening. Great to be back on trail, everybody, after my battery incident. Ha ha, last episode. So uh, I'm going to be much more conscious of keeping my batteries charged up and paying e extra special attention when I have an opportunity to plug in. Pushing north, everybody. Loving the AT. view from Porcupine Outlook, mile 16, 18.2. It's going to be a nice spot for lunch. Goddard Shelter, mile 1623.9. Glastonbury Mountain Lookout Tower, mile 1624.2. I don't think I can resist this one. What an awesome location for lunch number two. Amazing view, everybody. You could see back into Massachusetts, Mount Greylock, Stratton, Bromley, Mount Snow. There's just 
so many times out here. I just wish you could be here. The, the video you're seeing just absolutely does not do it justice. I'm up there on that tower. Of course, it has uh, cables that are securing the tower, and you can still feel it swaying in the breeze. It's just it definitely had my heart pumping, that's for sure. And then you actually look at the structure, and it's nothing but angle iron bolted together. Just remind you of a big old erector set. And it just seems like if something cut loose, it could come crashing to the ground. It's getting to be around 3 p.m. right now. And I'm going to try to do what I can to make some tracks here for the rest of the day. I have to put some decent miles on the board to kind of make up for my yesterday's uh, battery failure. So we'll see how the day goes. Hopefully get some great, more great sights along the way. I always love how the terrain changes when you get up over 30 couple hundred feet and just a breeze that, that blows through the trees. It's actually, honestly, I bet it's about 60 degrees right now or maybe maybe 65 with a cool breeze. Um, but things are starting to change as I continue to move north. Loving Vermont so far, everybody. Kid Gore Shelter, everybody, miles 1628.2. Again, a shelter that has a bunk system that is for pairs of two on the upper and lower, table right in the middle. And according to Gut Hook, the sun rises right through that valley. And this is a view from just inside the shelter area. Beaver Bog, everyone. Mile 1632.5. Okay, everybody getting all settled in here at the Story Spring Shelter, miles 1632.8. That's going to give me 19 miles even for the day. Uh, I will definitely take that. Real happy with that. I had lots of climbing today. And I'm just really loving Vermont so far. I can definitely tell the terrain is changing. Um, and it's just absolutely amazing. The Glastonbury Observation Tower was a real treat today. And I hope you guys enjoyed the view of that. And, you know, two nights ago, I had a situation with my fuel canister or my stove. I was trying to heat my dinner. And the flame was actually burning down to nothing after about two to three minutes. And I'm not sure if I have a situation with my fuel canister or if it may be my stove. It actually did it again this evening. So I may be looking at doing some type of uh, modified cold soaking my dinner um, a couple hours before I come into camp and then trying to heat, you know, even if it's just a little bit of hot water to try to make my meal a little bit warmer. But uh, I'll work through it and grab a fuel canister. I tried to get one when I was in town. Um, unfortunately, when I went to Walmart, they were all sold out and there was no other outfit or so. Um, just one of those things that you got to deal with. So I'll definitely get through it. So I'm going to get some sleep, um, actually get some editing done, then get some sleep. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching Wild on the Trail. Take care, everybody. Good night.